Hey, what's up, everybody? This is going to be a... Well, you started throwing around the idea of KD to Boston, even though there was another time in life when I would have dreamed of that. I'm sorry about that. that. Another team just banked on... I'm sorry that you had to hear the words of Rosenberg. That was an ad. I didn't mean to do that. But here, today, we're going to discuss Wavy Navy Poo, and we're going to discuss a theory that's been put out there by black men. So this isn't a theory about black men by white men. This is a theory about black men by black men. Now, this is not something that I personally subscribe to. I'm just bringing it up here just to get your thoughts on it. The, the idea is these young black boys, these young black men in the streets are gangbanging so hard. And nobody ever set, stops to ask, why do they hate each other so much? What is the beef over? Okay, yeah, the beef is you're in a different gang. Your gang kills my homies. We kill your homies. But as far as conflict resolution skills, is this a result of femininity? Is this a result of them being raised by their mothers and not learning conflict resolution skills in a masculine way, talking it out, agreeing to disagree, compromise? They learn to tit for tat because they were raised by women. Now, this is not my idea. This is not my opinion. This is an opinion that has been thrown out there by black men such as Willie D from the Ghetto Boys. Now, Wavy Navy Pooh was murdered last year. And he was a promising football player. But check this out. This is his last video before he got one of his last videos before he was murdered. He got shot in a car with fully automatic weapons. His one year old kid was in the car. His five year old kid was in the car and his girlfriend was in the car. He was struck over 80 times or the vehicle was struck 80 times over 100 bullets. Everybody survived with him. Just feel the demonic energy. This if you're one of those people who can sense energy, feel the energy of this. Bitch, who ready to die? 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 We got G Lux, AI, Draco, Keltex, ready to fry. I was booking studio time just to fake on IG, niggas ready to lie. You hear the energy of that song? It makes me feel uncomfortable. I feel like the devil is talking. The sound of bullets flying through the air caught on camera from a dash cam of a car near the Friday night shooting. Miami-Dade police on Saturday identifying a victim, 27-year-old Chandler Bobian, also known as rapper Wavy Navy Pooh. The shooting happened on the intersection of Southwest 152nd Street and 127th Street near Zoo, Miami. Approached him from the driver's side, opened fire, and then fled westbound on 152 Street. Detectives say Bobian had... All right, now you got a general idea, right? Now, what I want you to also see... Is this live stream where you can actually see how much he hated his opposition. You can see how much he hated his opposition. Just check this out. Fred Rari is his op. That's Fred. Piss me the fuck off, nigga. Huh? See where the fuck I'm at, nigga. Huh? 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 Where we at, man? Where we at, man? Right on that screen, man. Huh? Yeah. To the neck of my, to my hood. Show you what we living like. I don't care. Yeah. How your chain, nigga? Uh, 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 all right, so if you don't understand what you just seen, Fred Rari is his op. Fred was at the store in Fred's hood. Fred is from the pork and beans. They call it pork and bean. You know, pork and bean. A white person would say pork and beans. And they would say poke bean, poke bean. So they live in the poke bean projects, Fred Rari. They're beefing with the brown subs. That's the name of an apartment complex. That's where Wavy Navy Poo is from. So Fred is at his local hood store recording himself, you know, feeling good, talking trash. 
Wave and Navy Pooh must have seen it. And he said, you know what? I'm going to the store and I'm going to record myself at his hood store and I'm going to call them out. So he come up there. Where they at? Where they at? And then after Wavy Navy Pooh leaves, another guy comes up there like, no, where, where Wavy Navy at? Oh, this fucking come out to the store, man. Come out to the store. Your pussy out to the store. Fuck and, and, and all right, so now that I gave you guys the context, I gave you guys the full picture. What I want to know is this. Why can't these two, well, instead of somebody having to die, Wavy Navy Pooh got killed in front of his kids on his one-year-old child's birthday. They were going to the zoo. He got sprayed up and killed. Why why couldn't these two men sit down and talk to each other? Now I'm gonna give you some I'm gonna tell you something. Fred Rari is an intelligent guy. Fred Rari was 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 convicted. He was accused of so many murders when he was like 15. He beat him. And I actually seen a live stream of him talking about the Miami OGs. And 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 I thought he was a dumb dude, but when I saw this live, I realized he's actually very intelligent. Yeah, these guys are from Miami, by the way. But he's very intelligent. Very intelligent. And uh, you can see his intelligence. Just take check this out for a second. Man, ain't take a penny off it. You hear me? A penny. And I'm pretty sure Uncle Lou, if I was signed to you, man, you would have took half of it. For a fact. <laughs> for a fact. But this is an out of town nigga showing me this love, embracing me. You hear me? Listen, man, any out of disco for my out of towners, man. And I'm standing on this, man. Listen, if a nigga with me from out of town, they good. Ain't nobody got to check in if they with me. And nobody ain't going to fuck with them. You know why? Because we're going to bust them guns. We're going to bust them guns and they know that. You feel me? My thing is this. All you dudes who saying we be letting these people come in the project, we be getting these niggas parents. When the last time you stepped foot in the project? Huh? When the last time When the last time you walked through them projects? Huh? By the way, he's talking to the Miami OGs who are saying that these the new generation of Miami rappers are letting out-of-towners run Miami. But he's saying the Miami OGs ain't doing nothing for these guys that live here. The out-of-towners are giving them the opportunities. Uh, when the last time y'all walked through the poker beans? When the last time y'all drove out of poker beans? So stop all that faking ass shit like y'all been in the hood, supporting the hood, and this and that, saying we just letting niggas come in our hood and this and that and that for the young Miami artists. Huh? I'm just asking Uncle Luke because I don't know. Do you got a studio for these young boys in the inner city? What platform do you have outside of football for for the rap for the rap for the rap young boys? What you saying? How you saying? Already blackmailed. You feel me down here in Florida? Cause shit, what you what you did? What y'all did for me? Huh? So what y'all did for me? Look at the message you putting out for the young boys. You know what I'm saying? Why y'all ain't never reach out to me? All right. So basically, what I wanted to do is show you that he's an intelligent dude. He's successful. He's got he, later on in that life, he shows us he has a beautiful home. He has beautiful cars. And basically what I'm trying to say is if you didn't know who he was, you would think he was a straight animal, savage, sadistic sociopath. But the boy is intelligent as hell. He's smart, goal oriented. And I really wanted to play the part where he says, I realize life isn't always Life isn't only about shoot them up, bang, bang. But when I was in the projects, that was my mentality. But now that I'm a successful rapper and I'm seeing the world, I understand that I was programmed to be that way. So I was very impressed by that when he said that. So here's the thing, man. Why are these guys, these guys are so intelligent. They're able to handle conflicts with people outside of their race. If he had an issue with somebody who was white in a, a business conflict, he would be very uh, mature about it. He could handle it through lawyers. There would be no killing no beef. But when they have an issue with another black man, that's when it gets ridiculous. So my point is this. Is this a result of, of, of these guys taking on feminine feminine ways from their mothers? And that's why they engage in this tit for tat beef? Is that why they can't sit down like a man with their opposition and say, look, what do we have to do to stop these problems, to stop these innocent kids from getting hit by crossfire? Why can't they do that? Why is it so difficult for these two guys not these two specifically, but any two guys from rival gangs, why can't they sit down and talk their problems out? You can't tell me that they can't do it because if they were dealing with a white person, they could sit down and actually have conflict resolution skills. But when it comes to the, the guy from the rival gang, you know, so, so what do you think about this? Why do these guys hate each other so much? Why do these guys argue with each other so much? You know, they go back and forth on the internet. Yes, it's feminine because women do argue. Men are supposed to figure it out. 
So why aren't they figuring it out? Why are they engaging in this tit for tat? Is it because they were raised by their mothers? Let me know your opinion. Rest in peace to Wavy Navy. If his family sees this, this is not meant to be disrespectful. I don't know who he was raised by. I'm just using this as an example. I'm not saying that this applies to these people that I'm talking about. I'm just using this as an example. Peace.